the use of logic in a persuasive essay. An argument is a form through which a writer attempts to explain an idea that goes beyond that which is simply factual, but can be demonstrated through the creation of a series of logical points. Therefore, any writing in which you make a case for a particular interpretation or argue for a particular point of view would be considered an argument. A persuasive essay is the kind of argument essay in which you seek to advance your own original viewpoint or position on an issue. However, you may not rely simply on your own personal feelings about an issue. Rather, you must use a series of logical points to make a strong case for that position. The key to proper persuasion is the use of logic. This involves developing a rational and an intelligent argument in support of your position. The position that you've taken may ultimately be something that the reader does not agree with, but your reasoning must be valid and seek to alleviate potential counterarguments by those on the other side of an issue. It is extremely important that while developing these series of logical points, you avoid logical fallacies. Logical fallacies are common errors in reasoning that will undermine the logic of your argument. Fallacies can be either illegitimate arguments or irrelevant points, and are often identified because they lack evidence that supports their claim. Avoid these common fallacies in your arguments and watch for them in the arguments of others. Our first kind of logical fallacy is called slippery slope thinking. This is a conclusion based on the premise that if A happens, then eventually, through a series of small steps, B, C, D, E, and so on, will happen too. Basically equating step A to step Z. So if we don't want step Z to occur, A must not be allowed to occur either. This is a logical fallacy. Here's an example. If we ban all SUVs because they are bad for the environment, eventually go the government will ban all cars, so we should not ban SUVs. In this example, the author is equating banning SUVs with banning all cars, which is not the same thing. A hasty generalization. This is a conclusion based on insufficient or biased evidence. In other words, you're rushing to a conclusion before you have all the relevant facts. For example, even though it's only the first day, I can tell this is going to be a boring course. In this example, the author is basing their evaluation of the entire course on only one class, and on the first day, which is notoriously boring and full of housekeeping tasks for most courses. To make a fair and reasonable evaluation, the author must attend several classes and possibly even examine the textbook, talk to the professor, or talk to others who have previously finished the course in order to have sufficient evidence to base their conclusion on. Post hoc ergo proctor hoc. This is a conclusion that assumes that if A occurred after B, then B must have caused A. For example, I drank bottled water and now I am sick, so that water must have made me sick. In this example, the author assumes that if one event chronologically follows another, the first event must have caused the second, but the illness could have been caused by the burrito they had the night before, a flu bug, a chemical, any other kind of possibility. There is no reason without more evidence to assume that the water caused this person to be sick. A genetic fallacy is a conclusion based on an argument that the origins of a person, idea, institute, or theory determine its character, nature, or worth. For example, the, folks, the Volkswagen Beetle is an evil car because it was originally designed by Hitler's army. In this example, the author is equating the character of a car with the character of the people who built the car. 
However, the two are not inherently related. Begging the claim. In this kind of logical fallacy, the conclusion that the writer should prove is validated within the claim itself. Filthy and polluting coal should be banned. This is begging the claim. Arguing that coal pollutes the earth and thus should be banned would be logical. But the very conclusion that should be proved, that coal causes enough pollution to warrant banning its use, is already assumed in the claim by referring to it as filthy and polluting. In short, begging the claim doesn't answer why. A circular argument. A circular argument restates the argument rather than actually proving it. For example, Donald Trump is a good communicator because he speaks effectively. In this example, the conclusion that Trump is a good communicator and the evidence used to prove it is he speaks effectively. Those are basically the same idea. Specific evidence or details about what makes his communication effective would be needed to establish this claim. An either-or fallacy. This is a conclusion that oversimplifies the argument by reducing it to only two sides or choices. For example, we can either stop using cars or destroy the earth. In this example, where two choices are presented as the only options, the author ignores a range of choices in between, such as developing cleaner technology, car sharing systems for necessities and emergencies, or better community planning to, to discourage daily driving. Rarely in any situation are there only two potential choices, so either or fallacies are almost always problematic. An ad hominem attack. This is an attack on the character of a person rather than on the opinions or arguments that they've presented. For example, environmentalist strategies aren't effective because they are lazy tree huggers. In this example, the author doesn't even name particular strategies that environmentalists have suggested, much less evaluate those strategies on their merits. Instead, the author simply attacks the characters of the individuals in the group. Ad populum. This is an emotional appeal that speaks to positive traits, such as patriotism or religion or democracy, or something negative, such as terrorism or fascism, rather than the real issue at hand that should be addressed. This is a distraction technique. For example, if you were a true American, you would want to support the rights of people to choose wh whatever vehicle they want. In this example, the author equates being a true American, a concept that most people in the United States want to be associated with, with allowing people to buy any vehicle they want, even though there is no inherent connection between the two. It's a distraction technique. Red herring. This is a diversionary tactic that avoids the key issues, often by avoiding opposing arguments rather than addressing them. For example, the level of mercury in seafood may be unsafe, but what will fishers do to support their families? In this example, the author switches the discussion away from the safety of the food and talks instead about an economic issue, the livelihood of those catching the fish. While one issue may affect the other, it does not mean we should ignore possible safety issues because of, of possible economic consequences to individuals. The initial issue being discussed, food safety, has been diverted to a different topic. That's why this is a red herring. Straw man. This move oversimplifies or mischaracterizes an opponent's viewpoint, and then attacks that hollow argument. For example, people who don't support an increased minimum wage don't care if businesses can't afford to pay their workers. In this example, the author oversimplifies or mischaracterizes an opponent's position. In reality, 
the opposition probably has more complex arguments to support their point. By not addressing those arguments, the author is not treating the opposition with respect or effectively refuting their position. Moral equivalence. This fallacy compares minor misdeeds with major atrocities. For example, the protester who knelt during the national anthem is disrespecting the flag and is as bad as Hitler. In this example, the author is comparing the relatively small action of a person expressing their beliefs nonviolently to the horrific actions of a historical figure who led to the deaths of tens of millions. This comparison is obviously unfair and ridiculously inaccurate. Moral equivalence always undercuts the seriousness of whatever legitimate point could be potentially made about an issue. Certainly numerous examples of logical fallacies can be found in the general public discourse about many issues. If one simply turns on cable TV news, scrolls through Facebook comments, or listens to some politicians speaks, speak, dozens of these flaws in logical thought can be discovered in a very short amount of time. However, in quality college-level writing, you should not engage in these logical fallacies. Instead, you should seek to raise the level of discourse to a more useful and more intellectually honest plane. That's the challenge of this course and one of the main purposes of a college education. So are persuasive essays only about the use of logic? No, not entirely. In addition to a logical set of points, your essay may include details that appeal to the reader on an emotional level. These, however, are not the crux of your argument, but instead are elements that add color to the overall picture that you've painted via, log via the logical set of points. So aim to develop a thesis statement with at least three or four key logical points in support of the position you are advocating.